so with my dedicated gravel wheels now sorted you can check them out here if you're interested uh, I can now take my 700c wheels and optimize them 100% for road riding which means new tires while I already have these Strada Bianca tires uh, 30c which are not bad but it's not something I recommend since they're such a pain in the ass to mount and they're not tubeless compatible either Lately I definitely caught the tubeless bug, so I want my road wheels tubeless as well. So the Strada Bianca is going away. So with a lot of research, I came to the conclusion that the tire I was after was this. The Schwalbe. Schwal, Schwalbe, god damn it. The Schwalbe Pro 1 in 28. I'm very much into the wide tires lately so my criteria for the new tires were couldn't be narrower than 28 and they had to be tubeless so uh, after all that research this will be the tire for me hopefully they're pretty light and supposed to have very low rolling resistance as well so uh, in this video we'll check the actual weight see how easy or how difficult they are to mount and we'll check the actual width so enough chatting let's get to it so before we get into the misery we'll just check the weight of these pro one tires look at this funny so they came in at 303 and 305 respectively that should mean about 40 grams lighter than the challenge tires that's good news so moving on to the misery then, I will just come out and say straight off the bat, the main mistake I did here was that I did not change the tubeless tape. I used the same tape as I had used with my previous tires. I thought that would be no problem at all. In hindsight, that was the main reason I had one of the worst nights of my life. Okay, that was a bit of an over exaggeration, but anyway, here's how it went. I confirmed the rotation direction on the tire and put the tire on the rim. I could get the tire on without any tire levers. Using your, the palm of your hands is a good tip instead of trying to do this with your fingers and thumbs. So I will always try to seat the tire before I put sealant in, just to prevent getting sealant all over the floor. As you can see here, I didn't even get close to getting the tires to seat. So the next trick in the book is using soapy water on the bead of the tire and the rim. And to increase my chances a bit more, I used my tubeless pump with a pressure chamber. Still not even close. So the next trick was removing the valve core from the valve so you get a bit more air quickly into the tire but still no go. So the third trick is to seat the tire with an inner tube which I learned from uh, a few viewers on my previous videos and that works pretty good on bigger tires. These 28s though as soon as I let the air out the bead popped back into the center channel on both sides. It's still worth a try though. The idea is uh, you only break the seat on one side, take out the tube and then uh, you have one side seated. It will be easier to seat the other side with no tube in the tire. Uh, but yeah, did not work in this case. So the next thing I did, unfortunately, was filling up the tire with sealant. My thinking was that this would help seat the tire as it's sealed at the same time. However, as you can see, that is usually not the case. So 
Whatever you do, even if you don't manage to seat the tire, at least make sure it holds a bit of pressure, even if it's not totally seated. That will prevent the sealant to get out all over the floor, like it did for me. Unfortunately, I was too stubborn and kept going and kept making a huge mess on the floor. That's another thing. Do this outside. Don't do it inside, for the love of God. So this is the point I gave up for the night. So when I finally decided to go back and really check the tape, I did realize that the offset spoke holes on these rims and the old tape was indented into the spoke holes, which meant that if your tires wasn't 100% seated, the air would definitely leak out around the spoke hole. So only thing to do is to remove the tape and get some new tape on there. As I removed the tape, I also realized that it was probably damaged around the spoke holes as I could see a lot of leftover sealant at a few places, like this. So it was definitely time for new tape. Just a, a clean of the rim. I've done another video on tubeless setup where I go a bit more in-depth if you want to know. The thing I will say is uh, I didn't have any dedicated tubeless rim tape at hand so instead I used uh, 3M tape that you can find super cheap on Amazon. A lot of people are using this stuff instead of the official tubeless tape from all the different manufacturers. I will uh, link this in the description as well. You get one roll that covers about 10 to 15 wheels, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's a lot more economical than dedicated tubeless rim tapes. The only thing you need to think about is it can be a bit thinner. You might have to double wrap the wheels. I did two layers just to be safe. So instead of soapy water, I used a bit more radical solution and that's tire beadwax. Uh, soapy water should do the trick. I was just tired of messing around with this now. But uh, it's a tip though. Also very cheap, so if you're really struggling, it might be a good idea. Don't forget to make a hole for the valve, as I did. Not the end of the world though. Okay, you can still do it with the tire on. Trying to pump it up then with my uh, tubeless pump with the pressure chamber again and the seat actually popped on about 50% of the tire and it held some air as well, maybe about 10 to 15 psi. S so once I started pumping more you can st still see it leaked as the paper on the floor here is uh, moving by itself but I'm definitely getting closer. I removed the valve core and use my normal floor pump and it seeded about 75% of the tire this time and held about 20 psi so getting closer and closer I was confident enough that this will work out uh, so I decided to put in some sealant and yes moving the tire around to make sure the sealant gets all around the tire so using the tubeless pump again, and now we're talking, it's starting to seat. It's not 100% seated yet, and once I start pumping up a bit more, you can hear the tire is leaking still. But once you hear that leak, just pick the tire up, move it around, and try to get the sealant to seal that air leak. And once it's sealed, add a bit more pressure. It would might do the same thing again. Just move the tire around. And hopefully the sealant will seal that again. And continue doing this until the tire has seated completely. And once it's seated, it usually keeps in air tight. And you can pump it up to 
a higher pressure and just leave it overnight to make sure everything is nice and sealed. I haven't had this much headache getting tubeless tires on before, but yeah, it's not always a dance on roses or whatever you say. Usually you can see a lot of instruction videos and everything goes flawless. It's not always the case, but you can work it out. So don't give up. I think it's worth it once you start riding on this. I think tubeless rides nicer than uh, tube tires and you can use lower pressures as well without risking pinch flats. I hopefully I won't have to mess around with these for a while now. I did get the tires on in the end and while I struggled a lot with the front one, uh, the rear one actually went a lot easier. I could do that with my normal floor pump. I didn't have to use my tubeless pump at all. So it's down to luck as well, for sure. Hopefully you learn some tricks, or at least hopefully you learn what not to do. If you have any other tips and tricks, please leave them in the comments. So now that I have these road tires on, I will be able to do the open up as a road bike test. So that will be a video coming soon. Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss that and leave a like. And uh, leave a like uh, if you found this interesting, helpful or something along those lines. Uh, that's it. Time to go to sleep. See you in the next one. Peace.